Hey Floss Tube, this is Mel from Mel's Travel and Stitching coming to you today from my living room in Lake Tahoe, California. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate all my subscribers. Welcome back. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I do appreciate it. Okay, so in honor of our festive food season, I thought I would include my favorite mashed potato recipe and I will include it below in the details section, description section? Can't remember what it's called. But anyway, it's the little down button on this side of the screen and I'll have the recipe in there. But also, all my videos I put in the details of designers and charts and if I make any modifications, I'll also list that in the description so you guys can reference that or you know where I shopped and that kind of thing. So just know, even though I don't mention it in every video, that is, um, I will do it for every video and it does take a little while to get it on there so if you watch the video within the first couple of hours the description box may not be there because I haven't gotten it uploaded yet. Okay so we in the FFO department I have one as my husband calls FFOs finally finished instead of fully finished he says finally finished and in this case that's actually true. This is um, the chart, Sue Hillis Designs, Baby Sampler, and this was for my niece's daughter. I did one for her first baby, and then the second, she wanted me to do one for the second baby, which I did start. You'll see here, I did start it in 2001, um, and this was just completed. I finished the stitching last year and then uh, got it fully framed. Just finished that up today. Yeah, mm-hmm. So I did, this is a unfinished frame that I got from Amazon. I painted it a couple different colors, whitewashed, not whitewashed, um, this antiquing color. I thinned it with water and just rubbed it on, rubbed it off kind of thing. This also was from Amazon, just an unfinished wood applique that I glued on to the frame. So this is an 8x10 frame. The chart, excuse me, the piece itself is just on 28 count linen with all the called for DMC threads. And um, the little charms, that was actually the hang up. So I did start stitching this in 2001, but as I said, I had already done one for her sibling. And... Um, didn't have the charms because the charms came with the chart and so since it was times two they were in here um, I had to contact Sue Hillis I, I did contact her last year first I check with my niece I'm like do you really want this finished and she's like absolutely uh, so you know going through the pile last year got it out niece says yes absolutely want it and so I got in touch with Sue Hillis she laughed that uh, she appreciated that <laughs> she's not the only one with ancient whips sitting in the pile. Um, so she got those charms sent off to me right away. Uh, no problem. Anyway, one more, one more shot. I did cover up the name for privacy, but this will actually get out in the mail this week. Mm -hmm. 2001. Thank you. <laughs> and I do have older whips than that. So, you know, slowly but surely. And so, then for in the finished department, if you guys remember the Scarlet House Butt Night Cat, it's a finish, all the stitching's finished. So this is 40 count cedar plank linen using the called for gentle art sampler threads. This is one thread over two linen threads. And I got all the stitching done, and I went to put the eyes on that I showed you last video the buttons, and the buttons I got were too big. Wah, wah. Uh, so in the tra trying to track down smaller buttons, the Joann's are out of half inch uh, tortoiseshell buttons. So yeah, that's cute. So I have a Joann's that's about an hour east of me and one that's an hour and a half east of me and I hit both of those up and both were out. So. Uh, Anyway, this is going to be put off for a little while, but I had originally thought I was going to do this, finish it as a push pincushion, and 
but then it's so cute. I can't, I can't, I can't put pins in the cat's face. So what do you guys think? What, how do you think I should finish this? Should I just frame it or flat fold or I don't know. I, I, I'm not the creative spirit here with finishing ideas. So I would appreciate if you guys chime in. Thanks. And so that was my only finish. I have whips. This is my drawn thread almost Halloween kit that I got. I really had thought I would have this finished by now, but it didn't happen. So here's where we are. It is very close, but as you may remember, I did decide to pick out the white, redo it in two strands of floss. And then I got the bats done and some back stitching and these leaves. So I did change the green out from the kit to use the Dinky Dyes Sea Glass. Just have a little bit more to do. So if I could just sit, sit down and finish it, you know, so just like we've moved on from Halloween and I'm doing the fall stitching. So, um, great. Now we have the Pumpkin Farm from Thistles. This is almost finished. This is 35 count putty Weeks Dye Works linen using um, Gentle Arts sampler threads, one thread over two linen threads. Do a little close up here. As you can see, I'm missing this pumpkin here and then the veining on this pumpkin. The called for color pum burnt pumpkin, I think, was is out of from my both LNSs, so I had to order it and apparently it was back ordered. And it's, Shit, it's on the way, so I'll get that finished up this week. But uh, this Garden Gate, I want to let you know my LNS does have Garden Gate in stock. So if any of you guys need it, I would be happy to send some off to you. Um, what else about this? Oh, I changed this color here, this pumpkin and this pumpkin. The called for color was Autumn Leaves, and I substituted Nutmeg for it. Hopefully the thread outstanding thread color goes with it or I might have to change that as well but that's very close to finish and I think I should have this fully finished by the time you see me next time and then just a quick little start on my home street sampler gobble because I cannot resist that turkey he's so cute so I just one evening I got in a little bit of stitching on him Little turkey face. So cute. Of course, I made an error in counting and had to re rip it out and redo. And the colors aren't showing up. His little dangly thing or whatever is red. Um, hmm. Anyway, this is 40 count vintage light exemplar. And I'm using one strand of needlepoint ink silk. I love stitching the silk. So this, this should get done quickly. Now for... Um, plans. I came across in the Target dollar section this cute little burlap banner and I thought I can stitch on that. So it has these mm, seven, well you get the idea. It's these little pennant things. There's seven of them. So I thought I would take three of them the metal ones, every other one or so, and stitch a fall design or Thanksgiving and put it up on the hutch. So I came up with this Kitty Cat's original gobble garland. So I'm going to do the pumpkin without the face, the leaf, the leaf, and the turkey face on there. So just wanted to explain how I'm going to center it in the middle here, but just to make sure, you know, if you're going off, off chart and coloring outside the lines, um, just some things to know is that you need to figure out your fabric thread count. So thread count is based on the number of threads per inch. So when I said on my other pieces that the linen was 40 count, that means it's 40 threads per inch. So, and then 
For example, 28 count would be 28 threads per inch. And often you stitch on linen, you would be stitching over two threads. So to find out how many stitches from a pattern per inch, you would divide that in half. So if you're working with 28 count, you would divide that in half, so you have 14 stitches per inch, which comes out to eta, 14 count eta, which is when you stitch over one on eta. So that is giving you 14 actual stitches per inch on the design. So I counted out the number of stitches in both in all three of those designs and did determine that they are going to fit here nicely in the middle of this little banner thing. Um, I was, had to decide if I wanted to do over one or over two, and I think I'm going to do over one because they're about one and a half inches by two inches, and this is about four by four and a half or so. So it'll make just a little design on here. You know, this is coated in plastic, so it might be a bit of a bear, but we'll see. This was just in the dollar section. It was $3, and I thought it would be a fun little... Maybe not so quick because I got to puncture the plastic stitch, but just something fun and quick for, for Thanksgiving. Then my other plan to start is the Lizzie Kate spooky string, uh, excuse me, <laughs> thankful string. I already did the spooky. And I'm going to use my coffee tea dyed Monaco a la Priscilla and Chelsea. And like I showed you in my last video, the 28 count really shrunk when I coffee tea dyed it and just in the processing of the heat and the cooking on the stove and then um, being in the oven. And I just wanted to address that, that this is cotton and I'm not sure how coffee tea dyeing of linen would, I would think it's going to be less shrinkage, but I just want you to know that so if you're trying uh, to you know, fit a particular frame or whatever, then what you would really need to do in this instance is recount with your cotton fabric, is recount the number of threads per inch to give you an accurate um, measurement and whether it's going to fit in your frame or not. So what you would then do is you just take your ruler, uh, get your one inch and just literally count the number of threads in one inch and that will give you the count of fabric and um, it's kind of complex to explain in a video, but we could, my husband is a math instructor, so we could do a further instruction if, if you guys want on how to calculate fabric and how to calculate, um, change up the scale of your pattern, bigger or larger to fit in a specific, say you find some super cool tray or whatnot that you want your design to fit in, um, you can manipulate, right, based on the fabric you use. Anyway, if, if you guys are interested in that, we could certainly um, do that. Just let me know in the comments. Okay, so that's it for plans. Did have some purchases, you know, because last time I showed you what Michelle Bendy Stitchy enabled me to do with the wishy, witchy washy Vlad's Vosh and... Hmm, Oh, hang 10, right. So I had to track down the rest of the series, right? Yeah. So I was able to get from three stitches in Spring, Texas. They had almost everything that I needed to complete the series. So from three stitches in Spring, Texas, I got, this is Raise the Roof, turkey dressing, so cute. Um, not gonna have time to get to this before Thanksgiving. So it'll be on the calendar for next year. And then I have Peter's Cotton Knits. Got Warm Water Wash. And then Sam Socks Shorts and such. Pretty cute. So that's almost all the series except for one. So I was then obsessed to go ahead and complete the whole series of laundry. And I went, tracked it. Track down Santa clothes. Santa's clothes are freeze dried. <laughs> uh, these charts are a crack up. 
really fun to read. Anyway, I tracked down this from the Stitcher's Garden in Arkansas. I have ordered from them before. They have a nice selection of, of fabrics and I love scouring their sale section. So of course, you know, a chart can't travel in the mail by itself. So in my scouring of the sale section, whoops, came up with some, some fun finds. So I got Mill Hill, Mary Moose, love all things moose. So that's going to get stitched up this year. Then these Pine Mountain called Frame Up. I guess they were a monthly series. And they came as a kit, and they have this hand-painted frame with it. So that's a little fun find. That was June. And then this is the December one. With the snowman and so forth. And I love this red frame with the snowflakes on it. And then we have a couple of charts. I'd never heard of this designer, Nebby Needle, but, you know, could be that I just live on, under a rock. This is Cabin in the Pines, and I love I love all things cabiny, and I live in the pines, so I thought this was a fun chart. Also, I, from the Nebby Needle is Feel Like a Nut, because hilarious squirrels. We love our squirrels around here, and this is a beautiful frame. Of course, then I'm going to have to kind of see if I can track down some lace, because that's a really nice finishing touch. I love that tone on tone. And I got By the Bay Needle Art White Pumpkin Patch Retro. Cool. These are, these are French knots, which I am unable to do. Uh, but I do a colonial knot in its place. So I guess I am in the monochromatic scheme feeling these days. Or when I was in the sales section. Also got a couple of charts from... a does, a pair of designers called Marilyn and Jackie's. They were in the Bay Area, and I definitely these were on my like long-term wish list. They these this is mm, copyright 2015, but I remember these guys from the 90s. Oh, sorry, that was Electric Tree. Maybe we'll get to that this year. And then this one is Tulip Love. And this copyright, this has to be ancient. Excuse me, 2008. Okay, so not so ancient. But they had been on my list, and I got them off the sale rack. And then thanks to Helen D., East Coast Crafter, she got me hooked on the Trilogy lineup series. I first uh, got... My interest was piqued with the winter lineup, and then she recently got the Halloween lineup, so now I'm going to have to commit. I was able to get the Christmas lineup, and oh my goodness, the Thanksgiving lineup, the pumpkin pie. That's just too much. It's so cute. Anyway, uh, okay, so that's it. Thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate you watching. Thank, thank you for taking time out of your busy pre-Thanksgiving schedule to spend some time with me. And have a great one. Enjoy the time with friends and family and eat lots of great food. And get some stitching in too. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.